We're going to stand up this time and read one part of the book of Revelation chapter 8. Because this is what happens when the seventh seal is opened. Why don't you all join together? Read from the book of Revelation chapter 8. And chapter 9 is also part of it, but we will not be able to complete all that. Hopefully we will be able to see a few important verses in chapter 8. But before that, let us all join together and read the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, chapter 8, verse 1. I want all of you to read along because the word of God is powerful and it transforms and changes you and prepares you. His word as you speak it out loud and your own ear hears it. It enters your heart and your mind and it does its transformational work in your life and prepares you for Jesus and his return. Let us read from verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour and I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. Then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed then the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water the name of the star is wormwood a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine and likewise the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. The rest of it is there. We wouldn't have time to go through it. Maybe in the coming weeks, you'll see. Thank you. You can sit down now. You can see from here, there's going to be meteoric attacks on earth when the saints pray, God listens and brings judgment on the people of the world, this beginning of the chapter tells us how prayer works. God does hear our prayers. Every time you pray, all your words, all your prayers are collected and they're offered up unto God. And when God listens to it, He speaks in heaven and He gives His judgment and then the angels come and enforce it. His word comes and enforces it. He gives you power so that you can enforce it on earth. He changes things on earth. But in these times of tribulation, the church would be taken up when the seventh seal is opened, which belongs to the scroll that has been taken from the hand of God the Father by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. And as he opens the seventh seal, this happened. All the prayers of all the saints are gathered in relation to this for judgment and justice for the earth and for God's plan to be fulfilled. And then God prepares these seven angels and they're given seven trumpets. And as they blow the trumpets, one by one, judgment comes upon the earth and inhabitants of the earth. So the first angel sounded in verse seven, 
and hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burned up a large meteor most probably strikes and as it passes through the atmosphere you will be able to see even in the past in the columbia spacecraft accident that took place as soon as it started falling down bits of it disintegrated they call it the ceramic coating that has been given there because of the intense heat as the space shuttle comes makes a re-entry into the earth it gets so heated up that anything other than ceramic which has been specially treated will burn up any metal any wood any stone any rock will catch fire as it falls down that friction will ignite it you see on february 1st 2003 that the space shuttle columbia disintegrated during atmospheric entry killing all seven crew members and those who saw it were able to see it all broken up in pieces and just falling down catching fire what is described here is a meteoric attack to such a large rock space rock that hits the earth is allowed to hit and when it hits it breaks up into pieces and then the water that is there in it will start melting and it will catch the atmospheric water and then it will come down with fire and also frozen ice and also blood and it will be thrown on the earth and when it falls a third of the trees are burnt up they catch fire imagine third a third is how much in a hundred percent three parts of the four parts that are there which is 75 percent how many match geniuses are here can you help me yes or no 75 percent of the trees are burnt up and then what happens all the green grass was burnt up that's what happens most important way of sustaining life on earth is vegetation that's why god created it even before he created man because all the other animals depend on plants for their food depend on plants for them to oxygenate depend on plants for all kinds of things and when they are destroyed there will be a great famine such a shortage of food farms and all kinds of places where they make food fields will be burnt up suddenly there will be a rice shortage you everyone will be frantic they'll run to the supermarket i remember when there was a cyclone in chennai a few years back and everything got shut out all the supermarket shelves were cleaned out within hardly a day i remember going there and no bags of rice no candle nothing was available that was important panic buying and that time you use your card and let's see how happens whether the internet is up whether the electricity is up when such an impact happens all the lines come down you better have some cold hard cash so all these people who tell you oh, let's go digital all that is a ploy of the devil to put you in a trap because you'll go there you can have 100 crores and you swipe nothing will happen no one is going to accept your little bit of plastic they'll say where's the money and then only you'll be able to see the value of that little paper that you hold in your hand i oppose all kinds of digital transactions because i think that it is a ploy of the enemy i try to use as much as hard cash as i can people will be like what you're still paying by this no no i purposely make it a point to pay with cash and avoid all digital transactions because all you need is a whack on the hard disk and all the numbers that are there can disappear and one bank has a crash and then everything can collapse completely don't believe in all these systems too much but you don't have to worry you are the people of God, God will take care of you but I am for telling this so you can share with the people who are there in the world. So the first blast, third of the 75% of the vegetation is burnt up. It will create a famine. Governments will grab all the food that is there for their armies and for their departments and for their workers and the people will be left high and dry. You know what happened during demonetization, people are standing up in queues. All the money that they had became nothing. Couldn't buy, couldn't sell, couldn't eat. 
There was panic all over the land. And that doesn't end. The second angel sounded and another huge asteroid is passing down a great mountain. Here joined the revelator is seeing. God is showing him what will happen to the earth. Such a huge rock like a big mountain. A great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships see the destruction 75 percent of the sea became blood it cannot be used when god struck the egypt and the egyptians and the false gods they worshiped it became blood and man could not drink that water imagine how you will be struggling for water at that time if you're here but you wouldn't be third of the living creatures in the sea died the fishing industry would completely be hit nothing would be available there you'll see dead fish floating in the water and they'll be washed up on shore huge whales and all kinds of big sea creatures the whole water will be almost polluted and and even if you catch a living fish from that kind of water how many will want to eat that because you can see dead fish floating all around all of them die and then they start floating and they start rotting and will big up such a stench and the third of the ships also that were there in the sea it's a big tsunami that will hit it'll rock will fall and then it'll big gigantic waves will go all around and will circum navigate the whole earth and hit every continent and all the coastal cities will be hit by this huge wave they themselves predict saying very soon the water levels are going to rise up and all the coastal cities are going to be flooded but god is the one who's holding it all back but when the dispensation is over and the devil is given his time then the protection of god need not be there the judgment of god will come upon the earth and so these huge waves will destroy and you know what are on the edges of all the seashores we'll see very soon what happened when a tsunami hit japan some time ago you know lined up on all the seashores what is there i'll share with you in a moment and then the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on the third of the rivers on the springs of water fresh water is hit now the sea water is hit first and then the fresh water is hit a third 75 percent of the rivers and the springs all your water sources all the water sources all the reservoirs that supply water to chennai city five six of them they get hit all the big rivers that are there in this land will get hit people will be completely crippled all farm activities all the water that they need will not be available and will fall on the fresh water on the springs and on the rivers and the name of the star is given wormwood the third of the waters will become wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter bitter water doesn't kill anybody many will have a bad taste it became poisonous we'll see what happens and the scientists are in on it they know certain things they've announced certain things at certain times and even now when president donald trump was elected one of the first things that he came was starting a space defense program nasa was not funded in the past few years all the funding was removed and they dropped all the other plans of space exploration because they didn't see anything good coming out of it definitely doesn't make sense come on you can't go from here to moon or to mars spending billions of dollars and what you're going to do there living in that dry air and inhospitable location with no other human being shut up inside a small little space capsule and living there just to say we lived in mars it'd be better to live on a place that is here nearby called pulal there's a prison there i would prefer that because every day they give good food and they let you play games you can even do your pg and ug and you maybe i think you can even do your post doctorate there 
they showed videos of they just big halls and they just walking around we think all of them going to be tied down in chains no they're walking down and every day an inspector comes and he eats the food first before all the prisoners prisoners are given food he eats all the food to see that there is nothing wrong with it and then he says it's good and so now give it to the prisoners i don't have anybody testing anything like that in my home so it is better to live in such a place than to go to mars and live in a place where you're exposed to space radiation you can die within 6 months of space travel those who stay in the space station the intestines start leaking their bones become thin just 6 months and right now the most powerful rocket that you can use will take 9 months to reach from here to mars the most powerful rocket that they ever have you go land there and touch it and then leave another 9 months So go there and say, oh, something is wrong. Can you send someone? And then by the time you plan and everything, it's all gone. It takes hours for communication. Don't think it's like just pick up the phone and say, hey, come and help us. They send a message. By the time it reaches Earth and they get it and then they send it back, it'll all be over. So they know that NASA knew that all this is just just to say to other nations, oh, we landed first and we did this, we did that. But they know God made Earth in such a unique fashion and manner. that life can be sustained here so easily this is just certain people trying to say oh man is nothing there is extraterrestrial life in other planets we can also live there you're nothing you just came from a monkey is all a darwinian perspective that is clouded the whole world but they themselves know a neo darwinist knows that all this is not possible at all they've completely all the atheists no intellectual intelligent atheist can now hold on to the darwinian theory they threw it out with his own words because it does not hold true they know it now every atheist who is an intellect will tell you how did life start on earth it is because of spores it is galactic sperm certain other creatures came and some of planted life but they have no proof for it but they'll believe that we have the proof in the bible and say jesus came from heaven to earth you go down and see he lived and there are witnesses and his power and his miracles are happening even right now in this present day and age they'll be blind to that why they refuse to repent they refuse to accept god if you see the end of this after the sixth angel is sounded in chapter 9 book of revelation verse 20 imagine billions will die billions of people will die or not right now there are approximately 7 billion third of them die hardly a billion or even less would be left on earth and what happens verse 20 chapter 9 it says but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent they so hardened they resist god they rebel against god they did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold silver brass and stone and wood wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk and they did not report of their murders of their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts they continued in their own evil ways even after such judgment that comes on the earth that's why we know we are in the last days and these impacts are definitely going to take place have no doubt about it multiple meteors will hit the earth but the church who believe in Jesus Christ will be taken up before that that is why the president of united states stopped the space god program and started giving funding why they were looking into the sky to see what happens and what are the things that are going on in our solar system and in and the prediction is that april 13 2029 an asteroid which they they themselves have given nasa has given a name of a destroying demon called apophis that's what it is called it will be a one that is so big and it will fly so close to the earth initially they told many years ago what will actually happen they did not say it will fly by they said when it was discovered in 2004 you can go and see this in the nasa information center and it will tell you that this three and a half football field size thousand one thousand one hundred feet across they measured it already and it is flying down and they said in 2004 when they first discovered that's the first time they saw it 
don't think that they know everything and they got everything in control you know the last year many meteor hits took place on earth only after they hit did they know that it had hit and eyewitness accounts tell them oh we saw something falling from the sky and only then they say oh okay where did it happen and they try to go and see what took place there so this three and a half football size field rock will come and hit them that time they said definitely there's a possibility of earth impact by 2029 it'll happen on the specific day that they're given on april 13th 2029 now they are saying that it'll just fly by so close that it might even knock out all the satellites just flying so close all that is needed is at the time if the church is taken up god just has to and then it'll change the direction and the trajectory how sure are they we wanted to land a particular moon lander and did not go as planned suddenly something happens in the same way anything can happen you throw a rock you throw the cricket ball wanting to hit the stumps but it can go for a sixer as you throw it and leaves your hand only after it reaches its destination you know where it exactly is going to hit in the same way all these calculations how sure are you that it's going to just fly by and there is also cover up there are people who worked in nasa who came and told certain groups of people that this is just been covered up so that there is no panic on earth and when that person told that immediately he was threatened saying you will be completely removed of all your support even your pension will be taken away you lose your job and so he came back and he said please remove my name don't ever mention my name in any of the things that are there because he confirmed saying they right now saying it will just fly by but actually it won't fly by it luckily hit the, hit the earth at this time and they've given it this name the nasa scientists based on the greek god of apep he's an enemy of the ancient egyptian god ra the sun god that they worship he's the uncreator apophis means the uncreator it means an evil serpent who dwells in the eternal darkness of the duat and he's the one who tries to swallow the sun god ra all this is an alignment they do not know the bible they have not both read the book of revelation but i don't know why they gave such a name they could have just left it as triple nine four two as they identify different objects that are there with the numbers and serials because there's so many billions of them there they cannot just give a name but this one they themselves gave this name and it all fa falls in alignment why because the sun will be darkened at that time and this rock will come and hit earth and it will make it impossible for us to receive the sunlight Zechariah chapter 51 verse 25 says behold I'm against you or destroying mountain who destroys all the earth you've got to see in the old testament times mountains represented evil spirits and the gods that the heathen worship not the god of the capital G there is only one god I'm talking about the evil spirits and the fallen angels who make themselves to be god god with a small g and they were worshiped and they are represented by mountains even the mesopotamian god enlil he is shown as a mountain that's why when jeremiah writes this prophecy we have all forgotten it in our nation also there are many mountains which are taken up to be places for certain kinds of worship and the bible says behold i'm against you destroying mountain who destroys all the earth says the lord i'll stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the rocks and make you a burnt mountain burn it up that's what god is doing and when this asteroid strikes it is in relationship with what god spoke in revelation chapter 12 verse 7 it says and war broke out in revelation chapter 12 verse 7 war broke out in heaven michael and his angels fought the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought where is this battle happening it's happening up in the sky and the devil and his fallen angels did not prevail they were not able to hold their place nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer this is not speaking about the war that first took place right there in the third heaven this is a battle that takes place in the second heaven and they had no place there in the second heaven because the church is taken up and now michael comes and he starts the next step towards the judgment on the earth and grabs all these we know jesus himself speaks 
about over here satan falls like lightning from the sky he wants to make himself a god and he's called the prince of the power of the air he's about he doesn't come down and walk he thinks he's god he wants to be above on the earth and so michael and all the war angels come and grab him fight him and cast him down so the great dragon was nine says was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and the satan who deceives the whole earth he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him so all the principalities the main supporting powers which are given great responsibility that's why you see here after every blasting of trumpet they are all thrown down this physical act represents the spiritual act of all these evil spirits fall down because they represent all the these great mountains again zechariah chapter 4 verse 7 it says who are you oh great mountain because the ancients the heathen they respected these mountains where they felt these evil spirits were there even in our nation it is there there are certain mountains that they won't even let you climb on which is there in himalayas no mountain climber has gone there they've gone to everest they've gone to other place they said do not go there they will stop you there are many explorers who wanted to go and climb that mountain but they said no don't set foot on this place you cannot go there i'll share about that with you later but you can find it and so what happens he's cast down to the earth and his angels were cast out with him zechariah 4 7 says who are you a great mountain before zerubbabel you shall become a plain and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace to it and grace to it and so that's how the kingdom of god is built and verse 9 it says the hands of zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple and his hands shall also finish it then you will know that the lord of hosts has sent me to you who's this speaking he's speaking about jesus who started his wonderful work in jerusalem and now all these are trying to stop him but the plan of god will be fulfilled jesus will come and he will dedicate the temple and he will sit there he will sit there on his throne right there on earth in jerusalem and you can all see him at that time this is a war that is going on in the heavenlies jesus himself says Matthew Mark chapter 13 verse 25 and the stars will be falling from heaven and powers in the heavens will be shaken it's in relation stars will fall the word for star in greek is aster and the word asteroid comes from the word aster which is there in greek one of the very first uh, space researchers is the one who gave that name to it so jesus is using that same word and aster which is asteroid will be falling from the heaven sun is a star so that is not the star that they're referring to because if a object as big as the sun hits the earth nothing will exist on earth so it is not something as big as the sun it is an asteroid that falls and along with it jesus is saying verse 25 mark and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heaven will be shaken they will also be cast down and he says in verse 6 matthew chapter 24 you will hear of wars and rumors of war nations will rise against nation kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be famines not just one famine pestilences not just one pestilence even now the world is hit by the coronavirus you know what the premier of china said about it it's a demon virus here is a communist who believes there is no god and he makes this statement demon virus how does something of the spirit realm come into a nation and the mouth of somebody doesn't believe there is a god and they're so strong they say you cannot worship you can have no spiritual activity in china you cannot have a church and accept jesus christ you cannot follow anything and he's saying a demon because he's not able to control but not one will happen multiple things will happen famines have already been there and earthquakes but it all will happen simultaneously before the coming of the terrible day of the lord what will happen famines pestilences rising up in multiple places but it's all preparing these are like what you can call as the before the birth there are contractions before the start of a new dispensation everything is getting ready waves of these things will happen to warn the people of the world and then suddenly when god the father decides the particular year and the time 
then all these will happen together at that moment everything will come crashing down you will hear multiple uncontrollable viruses coming up from all the different parts of the world but you don't have to worry you'll be taken up you'll be kept safe hallelujah that is why you've got to be serious and you've got to be committed and dedicated are you ready to meet up with jesus in the air that is the question that you could ask yourself so why did they call this the wormwood it might not happen on april 13 2029 it might happen even much before that i'm not telling exactly on that day but i tell you for sure all these meteor strikes will happen that is one thing for sure but what the space scientists have said is it definitely aligns with it there are even a non-governmental space group which has been formed to observe and to study all these things and they are almost against nasa saying why are you not telling the truth you can see about this group also they are the ones who tell them you've got to tell the truth let the people know do not hold back these things they call the b612 this is the foundation of a private not profit organization it is there in california they're dedicated to planetary science and planetary defense against asteroids that is their main objective and also other near earth ob object impacts and these are this foundation is led by scientists former astronauts and engineers from all the different important government institutions like the institute for advanced study of research in stanford university nasa and other space industry why their goal is to protect earth from asteroid impact and what did this b612 foundation tell it is like imagine all the leaders who are retired now got get together and they know the truth they know what's happening inside the governments might not try to tell you the truth you cannot always believe what the officials say that's why this coronavirus spread why china tried to control it when the doctors and the nurses try to come out and tell that they're not able to control and it is out of their hands they did not at once try to help the doctors and the nurses what do they do they send some secret police and threaten them saying you cannot talk to the media at all none of you tell anything and they had to be quiet and their mouths mouths were shut and in that few days it spread throughout the entire region and people started flying in and flying out and that's why it went out why because they tried to suppress the truth that's what i'm trying to tell you just because someone who's an official does not tell you and says deny certain things do not accept or believe in it and this b612 foundation organization what does it say it says a hundred percent certain we'll be hit by a devastating asteroid but we're not 100 percent sure when because things can happen anyway in space all it needs is as it's flying there are asteroid belts and just one small rock which hits another rock it can change the trajectory light is a force that pushes the sunlight can push heat can push the other planets other objects with a gravitational force can pull it in a different direction how sure are they that will definitely miss earth you've got to listen to stephen hawking how many of you heard of him in a brief in a book called the brief answers to the big questions and when he considered asteroid collision to be the biggest threat to the planet and in june 2018 the u.s national science and technology council warned that america is unprepared for asteroid impact and has developed and released the national near earth object preparedness strategy action plan to be better prepared so all these different organizations they're able to see that definitely earth will one day be hit have no doubt about it but you've got to be prepared you've got to tell the people you got to say are you ready because a poisonous toxic asteroid will come and hit which the bible even calls it a wormwood why does it call it wormwood you will understand what could happen how could this bitter water kill people if you look at what happened in 1986 in saturday 26th in ukraine you would have heard of one of the biggest nuclear accidents that took place the chernobyl disaster the number four nuclear reactor that was there overheated when they actually tried at that time to go through a safety drill so what they would do they shut down the reactor and see how the backup generators fire up 
so that the reactor core doesn't heat up. When it heats up, then the steam will form and it will explode the reactor containment center and that will contaminate the whole region. They are actually doing like a safety drill. It is like suddenly we say, okay, let us all have a fire drill in the church. Let's see how good we are equipped to run out of the church. And in that kind of a situation, they blew up the reactor number four. And then the worst nuclear disaster in history took place on that day near the city of Prayapat. And people there were affected by it. They all had to be completely evacuated at 10 kilometer radius. Was completely evacuated. 49,000 people immediately were moved out and they increased that to 30 kilometers and they say 68,000 people then later was evacuated and all the firemen and all the safety people who went there 134 of them were hit by radiation and 28 of them died and even now the Ukrainian government is giving money to 36,000 widows whose husbands died as a result of this nuclear disaster that took place and they say that nearly 1.8 million including 370,000 people children are victims of the disaster and you will feel the effects of this for years to come because when the children are born who are not even born now in the future when they are born they can be born with defects which are related to this radioactive contamination that took place at that time why I'm sharing about this Chernobyl incident is we see in Russia the word Chernobyl means a particular plant that is there and that plant is a bitter plant and wormwood means Chernobyl in Russia so what is God saying an asteroid comes and these half prepared governments might think oh it is definitely going to hit in the last few days that is going to come they can send a nuclear warhead missile at it trying to break it down and disintegrate it you would have seen on this Hollywood movie what is that? I think it's called Armageddon where they see a rock going to hit and they want to drill a hole in that asteroid and they put a nuclear bomb into it and try to explode it. And if they try to do that and they fail, you know recently how the Iranian government brought down a passenger jet and all the people there died. Was it a planned attack? No, it was a mistake. Like that people can make mistakes. A lot of the countries now are capable of sending nuclear warheads. How are they all going to coordinate? Maybe the leading nations would not. Maybe suddenly one leader, North Korea says, Oh, what is this coming? No one is doing it. Send our missile. And they send it, they hit it and then it's contaminated with radioactive nuclear things and then it falls on the earth and all the water gets polluted by it. Why? Am I telling that is the same thing happened in Fukushima in Diachi nuclear reactor in Japan. How did that happen? There was an earthquake and a massive tsunami followed that 9.0 magnitude earthquake and 16,000 people died. Just recently it happened in Japan and because of the tsunami all the water went in and it got mixed up with the radioactive material that is there that they now have many storage tanks they say there are thousand storage tanks full of this radioactive water that has been kept there they do not know what to do with it it'll take years the chernobyl incident the final confinement disaster containing plan is going to be completed when not now it is still not over they put up many things but it'll take such a long time that i was shocked when i read when they're going to contain it completely it'll take thousands of years before they can even think about going back there or letting people there into that same place because that's how terrible a nuclear disaster is and here people are now scared that Japan is keeping the water these thousand storage tanks only because the Tokyo Olympics is going to take place at the time they don't want any problem so once the Olympics is over they don't want to keep that thousand storage tanks full of radioactive water there they put it out into the sea or let it out into the ground wherever the water touches then it will definitely affect the people who are there the fish will die all the fishermen will be affected by it and you might eat a fish which is radioactive and then you might get affected by it they are to in Chernobyl say nothing that grows there nothing that is there can 
ever be used. Very far away, near Chernobyl, there was a clothes industry and there they brought a wool that was taken from near the Chernobyl and no one told them and all the people who used that wool to make clothes, all those women also were affected. You can see how these things spread. One things get contaminated, people want to make money, they will not tell you this is from a contaminated place, they just sell it to someone to make money and they take it and they will say oh it's cheap and they will use it without knowing that it is radioactive. So these are the things that are possible that can take place but be sure an asteroid will hit but if you are in the Lord you will be safe from it. You don't have to worry about it. Set your life in alignment with God. There are so many other things which tells about all these things that the Bible have predicted. The dinosaurs were wiped out. Why? Because of a meteor attack that took place that hit the earth because it all happened immediately and they're all buried in such a fashion and manner and all the fossils report that and it is not millions of years ago as certain scientists tell because they have found certain dinosaur fossils with blood almost there because they will tell you earth is oh life has been going on on earth for millions of years I can tell you one day at least 10 minimum or there are more than that scientific evidence why the earth is not millions of years having life the bible says it is just around 6000 years that's all if you look at even all the other planets in the solar system it does not prove what the scientists are saying it's all a cover up even the smithsonian in institute which has the biggest one of the most reputed museums will sweep in in certain places where certain digs and finds are there and take away the evidence immediately so that people do not know the truth. They take it and no one hears about it, no one knows about it later because those align with what God shows in the Bible and it is almost like these guys have made a deal with the devil to keep the people in darkness so that the plan of the enemy can be fulfilled in the last days. There are many other incidents I can tell which even Sodom and Gomorrah could have been a meteor attack as a big meteor came and hit the earth atmosphere the rock would have splintered and that's why we hear them saying that fire rained from the sky and fell on them and burnt them up the Chicago fire that took place is also like suddenly the entire city was up in flames they were wondering how it happened it could have been a meteor attack but that time people did not have the technology and they did not have the satellites and they did not have the telescope to see things and identify what exactly is the reason so be prepared, be ready. The words of Jesus will come true. Luke 21, 25, 26, 27. Jesus says, There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. I'm not trying to be a doomsday predictor or trying to put you in fear. I'm trying to get you ready so that you know these things will take place. Because Jesus said, As in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They are marrying and giving in marriage, eating and drinking and that's what the world is completely oblivious to the things that are happening. Just like when Jesus was going to be born, all of Israel and Jerusalem should have accepted him. They did not look at the signs. The Magi came, the three wise men and walked into Jerusalem and told them where is he who is born to be king of the Jews and they said it's according to the prophecy he must be there in Bethlehem but they're telling them that and sending them there but they are not able to understand the king is born what are we supposed to do they just sent them and they continued they were occupied with their own life they said i have this i have that i'm too busy i cannot do this i cannot do that jesus says men's heart will be failing from the fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken then they will see this son of man coming in a cloud with the power and great glory. This is, will be something that will take place at the end of the reign of the Antichrist when Jesus will come in his heavenly armies and you and I will be coming with him from heaven after the seven earthly years of the banquet of the bridegroom. So let us prepare ourselves because the Bible says the bride has made herself ready. Jesus is waiting for us. 
God the Father is waiting for the right time and for the restoration of all things to take place. And it has taken place. In Acts chapter 3 verse 21, Peter knows the prophecies of Jesus Christ and he's preaching. He knows that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed because Jesus told him directly, not one stone will be left on the other. It means total destruction of Jerusalem. And he knew that and he preached to them when they saw that miracle of that cripple walking, jumping and leaping and going in with them. He says, verse 19, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ. He knows he's going to be sent again. Because at this time he was taken up in the cloud so that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until, until the times of restoration of all things which, is, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. He's connecting it till the restoration of all things, till the reconstitution, till the refitting. What is this restoration he's talking about? He knows that Jerusalem and Israel will be wiped out in 70 AD. When Vespasian came and he camped around and put a siege around that city, they knew the end was near. They should have listened to the words of Jesus. And Peter knew it and he warned them. Jesus has been taken up. The city of Jerusalem and Israel will be wiped out. And then when he comes, when will he come and everything is restored? What is restored? Israel is restored. Jerusalem is restored. The restoration, reconstitution, re-establishment. Oh, that which was broken is now set. The bone that is out of joint is now put back in. All the prophecies that are there in the Bible are how they will come and inhabit that place and they will be able to make it into a fertile ground. All that is being fulfilled and now is almost ready and all that we need is God the Father to decide when to send Jesus Christ his son. Why don't we stand up at this time? For every time we come to the house of God, we're preparing ourselves and every time we worship, we sing his praises, we are preparing ourselves. We are strengthening our spirit. That is why I come to the house of God. Because your spirit man has to be stronger than your mind and your body. Many, even Christians, do not believe in certain things in the Bible and they find it difficult to accept it and understand it. Why? The mind is too strong. You spend 14 years in school just to strengthen the mind, but hardly spend two hours in a church once a week to strengthen the spirit, the inner man. And how can you expect that inner spirit to burst out with rivers of living water? Whenever there was a difficult situation the apostles and the early church faced, when they connect with God, the Bible says they're filled with the Spirit and then they preach. They're filled with the Spirit and then they operate with miracles and signs and wonders. You need to be people who operate in such a fashion and manner that at a time of crisis, your spirit has to take over. Your mind shouldn't direct you at that time. Your body shouldn't direct you at that time. Your body shouldn't make you afraid and your mind shouldn't make you make statements which are negative and which can destroy you. God's plan for you because you are cancelling it yourself with your own words. You should let the spirit take over at that time. And how does the spirit get stronger? By being in the presence of God, by letting it feed in the living waters, drink of it. For Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. We've got to keep drinking and let the spirit be stronger than the mind. Let the spirit be stronger than the body. You've got to say, oh Lord Jesus, Make my spirit stronger than my mind. Make my spirit stronger than my body. Why don't you ask God this morning as we come to the end of the service. Dear Lord Jesus, make my spirit stronger than my mind. Stronger than my body. Because that was the problem that happened in the Garden of Eden. When they killed the spirit and they let the mind take over and the body take over, everything went topsy-turvy upside down. Oh Lord, pray that each and every one here would be strong in the spirit because they are the ones, oh Lord, who will be taken up to be with you. Those who are strong in the spirit, who've got their lamps burning, who move in the spirit, who are led by the spirit. Oh, 
Pray that you'll strengthen each and every one of us, for you are the light of the world who came from heaven down to earth, O oh Lord. Here we worship you, King of days. Oh, we come to you and bow down before you. We say that you are our God, and that you're lovely, and that you're worthy, and that you're wonderful to us. That is why you've written it all and given to us. You've not kept anyone in darkness. You've given the final plan for the earth, all that will take place. Why I share this with you is so that you will align your life according to the word of God. Because the spirit of the ages just live and do whatever you want. Just be merry and do not be bothered about anything. The devil keeps people in that kind of a delusion. Till one day suddenly they breathe their last and then there is no return. For the Bible says it is appointed for men to die once and then the judgment. This life that you have, let us know the word of God and live it according to his word in alignment with his word so that we are not shocked, that you are not surprised. Oh Jesus, you lie of the world. You step down into darkness. You open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am. Pray that your power, your 
presence be with each and every one here, that your voice be heard by them. Oh, oh speak to each and every one, oh Lord. Pray that they'll follow you all the days of their life, that you deliver them every darkness. Leave in Jesus' name. Every plan of the devil against each and every one here be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Pray that you'll give them freedom and liberty, oh Lord. Pray that they live a victorious life. Oh, yes, oh Lord Jesus. Let your peace rule and reign in their hearts. Pray that your healing virtue would flow out. Pray that you'll renew all different parts of the body, oh Master, of the people who are, oh Lord, have any problem. Pray that you'll heal. Pray that you'll touch the mind and every lie of the enemy be removed. In Jesus' name. Oh, pray that you reignite each and every one here, oh Lord Jesus. Let your holy fire burn. Oh, baptizer of fire. Oh, baptize each and every one here. Not one be left out. Oh, yes, oh Lord. One last time. So here I am to worship. Here I am. Jesus, wonderful, mighty name. We ask and pray.